Okay, so this is the ETEC D3A. It is a double-A flashlight with Nietzsche LED that I don't think a lot of people know exists. It doesn't seem very common so far, but there's a lot to talk about in this light. So I hope you will stick around and walk through it with me. All right, so this is a titanium flashlight made by EggTech. EggTech? And it's actually been around for a little while. Now, what I really like about this flashlight is it's a simple tail switch function, but the tail switch does not impede its ability to tail stand, which can come, come up from time to time. My purpose, particularly for this flashlight, was to have something that could take a very standard or common size battery so that no matter where I was going, I had access to a flashlight that was capable enough, but also I could always find a way to charge it. So not only will I have uh, micro USB rechargeable 14500 batteries, which I will carry with this light that will provide the higher output, but I'll also be able to use standard double A's. Now the D3C, that flashlight is a little shorter and a little stockier and personally I like it a little bit longer it makes it easier to grab and turn on and uh, this is definitely the right thing because also the CR123's are not as common as a double A I think it might be the most common battery so the the chances of you not being able to find a double A somewhere that you are is pretty low what uh, I really really like about this flashlight is it's actually two different forms of input not only do we have a tail switch but we have a forward switch using the twisting motion of the front that combination lets you basically select one of two mode sets so the mode sets when we have it fully tightened are tur highest mode or turbo and that's it but you also have access, if you half press, you can get to strobe. Those are the only two accessible functions when the cap is fully tightened. Why I like that is I know exactly what I'm coming in on the moment that I press the button. But if I go ahead and if I turn it on, that's the high mode. If I turn it a little bit, I go all the way to the lowest mode. Now that it's unscrewed a little bit, when I turn it off, okay, which it doesn't have memory, and actually that's a good thing, I'll talk about it. Um, it comes in on the lowest setting. So if I purposely didn't want to disturb anyone, instead of clicking through the modes to get to my lowest mode, or having to do some combination, I know I can unscrew the cap, and I know the first mode that comes in will be a moonlight mode. All right, and then of course I can half press to go through three different brightening, brightness settings. And then it goes back to low, medium, high. Now, here's the weird part. Right after that, you get to strobe, and then you get to, like, some sort of, like, I don't know what to call this, and then an SOS mode, and then a battery check, I'm pretty sure. So the point is that having two different mode sets actually really works out well. So when you're at night and you just want it for um, kind of deterrence, if you will, especially with the 14500, uh, you can go ahead and leave it completely tight. So the first thing you get on is the turbo, which is the best thing you can have. And then the second mode, of course, being the flashing. Good enough. Um, I'm pretty happy with the mode set on this flashlight, funny enough. Uh, I do agree with Nick Shabazz on the all the different strobies. I, I have to agree with him. Like, if not, if one if one thing for sure, you don't need a tactical strobe if you have to click it six times to get to it, right? That's pretty useless. I don't mind having the SOS or any of that as the ending modes of the cycling that you do. Okay, I don't mind that. That doesn't bother me. But I don't see why the tactical strobe is there at all. That's a kind of a minor thing because you have to cycle through not once but twice in order to get to the strobe mode, which I think is much better than a lot of flashlights that go from low, medium, high straight to strobe. So if you forget, you'll go into strobe mode, which is never really that enjoyable. 
So the fact that you have to go all the way around through the cycle and you can always turn it off and it will reset back to the lowest mode or the primary mode in its particular mode set. In this particular case, you don't want memory. And you don't want memory because of the selector of the mode set by twisting the front. I really, really like that. I really, really like that, actually. I think it's very simplistic, but yet you can set it up the way you need it for the day. If you're, you know, during the day, maybe you'll start on the low mode so that you don't blow anyone's vision out. I don't know. You'll have to play with it, but the fact that it offers both completely independent from each other is kind of phenomenal. Now let's talk quickly about light quality. So this is a Nietzsche LED, which is a high CRI LED. And it's, I have to say, the light is so much more enjoyable to use. Uh, just for fun, I actually did a whole bunch of work last night at my desk using this kind of as a headlamp. Um, and it worked great. And my eyes didn't feel strained. I, I really do think that for actual work, a high CRI warm light, and this is 4000K, I think really, really is very, very nice. It's not the only high CRI light that I have available to me. The S SST20 4000K that's in the Astrolux a AO2 is a beautiful light as well. Same kind of warm tints. We have the Titanium Nietzsche FW3T, which is not only beautiful quality of light, but also very, very bright. I think 1800 lumens. But none of these take double A's. So I wanted a double A flashlight, and my experience was when looking at all the flashlights that they all either had really weird mode sets or the wrong combination, or they couldn't access an 18, four, uh, uh, 14 500, um, and so on. Or they were designed for 14 500, and when you put a regular battery in, they only get reached like 110 lumens, which is really dumb. So it feels like this light, based on everything I've seen, is about 250 lumens max, at the max of, of its range, when it's in using a standard AA. But I'm going to guess it's almost double that when you're using the 14500. Don't quote me, but it, I'm, I'm curious to see just how much brighter. We'll do a comparison follow-up when I finally get those batteries in. But I'm really impressed so far with it, even using double A's. And that was kind of an important thing. I needed it to work as good as, um, as a lot of the double A flashlights or better than them with just a double A, so that I wasn't giving up any functionality by having access to the 14500. Now, why that? Why do you need a special flashlight for those? Well, the heat is the problem. So I'm gonna guess that because this is titanium, I'm going to run into heat issues. However, the UI and everything built in is designed to regulate the heat. So it's built in to the flashlight, whereas if you put in 14500 into, say, an i5T, uh, from Olight, you're going to nuke the thing. It's going to be so hot because it's going to stay at turbo that, yeah, you're going to melt the lens. Um, this is a glass lens. I don't remember if it's sapphire, but it is a glass lens. And it's uh, there's plenty of headspace there. So it should actually do an okay job, at least for about a minute and a half, which is what I'm hoping I can get to without it being too hot. We'll have to see. But once I get the... 14500 batteries. I'll do a follow-up review of the flashlight, but so far I'm very, very happy. The only thing that I saw when I did my research on this light is that the they said the pocket clip can break. I haven't seen it yet, obviously. The pocket clip seems very sturdy, but I would have guessed any pocket clip can break, so we'll have to see how that goes. If it does break, I will let you guys know, but in the meantime... I'm very, very, very pleased. The form factor also, this is, and this is a, a AAA bat, um, flashlight. You can see the form factor is really phenomenal. It's very, very small and compact. And uh, I really, really like that. Having something like that that is in the AA range, I think is really useful. It's a little on the expensive side at 70 because of the titanium, but you can get a brighter LED that's not 
uh, Nietzsche in the aluminum, which is the D25A, that does exactly the same thing and is a little bit brighter. So I probably will also get that one if this turns out to be really good because I do like the UI and um, maybe brighter is better for traveling. Also, $30 flashlight versus $70 flashlight, you don't necessarily want to lose the $70 flashlight. So that's why I got this. Sorry for the ramble, but very, very cool light. I'm glad to have it, and uh, I'll let everyone know how it goes as I play with it.